Greetings brothers, it's been a long time coming, but we're finally here. We're going to be going over exactly how I do Battle Ready Sangre Guard. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you all the paints that I need, and it should be pretty self-explanatory if you follow along. Please consider watching to the end of the video, and also hit that like button if you enjoy it. I've done painting videos in the past, and they haven't really gained any traction. I would love if this did a little bit better. Thanks again, and let's get into it. So I'm going to be taking you through the journey from the grey all the way and we're going to start by talking about spray and I'm going to spray with Chaos Black followed by Retributor Armour and I think if you do this it means that when you do the spray coat of the Retributor Armour over the black it can be easy to see if there's any patches that you missed and if you did miss anything you can touch up very quickly with Retributor Armour Gold and I've obviously magnetised this model it's going to make doing some of those wings a little bit easier. I'm going to start with model color white from Vallejo and I think this is a better paint than the Games Workshop white and with all these paints we're going to be thinning them down with a little bit of water you'll see this throughout the video and also we're going to be basically doing two thin coats with this white over the top of the gold I think I actually do three coats but for a majority here if I don't specifically say it we're always doing two thin coats so when I get my paint onto the palette I like to basically make these little squares, I might be the only person that makes these little squares but I guess I'm trying to make sure that the consistency of my paint is even and then I'm going to start here with a slightly bigger brush because I don't really feel that I need to be accurate when I'm just putting on the very first colours and I tend to just go for base colours on my models to begin with. So I'll be doing like a lot of coats of paint with the bigger brush getting on quickly and then coming back and making it much more accurate in the future. So when I'm painting these wings I'm trying to make sure that essentially I'm going to paint all the edges and the underside of these edges where the little feathered bits would hit the wings. You can see it's been done there and that's basically so that when I come to paint the grey on the actual wings I don't have any sort of like nasty gold borders. Speaking of grey, we're going to get straight into it with Celestia Grey and this is a GW paint and this is a paint that I will use for both the wings. Again, I'll be watering it down and I'll be looking to add two thin coats because again, the light grey is not going to cover very well over gold. But in general, I think just always aim for two thin coats when you are painting. It's always going to get you a much better result than if you just like cheat I guess or you'd be lazy and just do that one coat. While I'm doing that because I have the arm off we're going to use a little bit of the fang and this is the blue that I basically use for all my Encarmite swords and axes so we're just going to coat up the sword with a first coat of blue and always, as mentioned I'm just using a very cheap synthetic GW brush for these base coats um, we'll use a more accurate brush later, but for now, we're just going to get that blue on and coat the entire piece of the blade. I do think it's good to magnetize Sangre Guard, and I, I have got a video coming out about that, because I think that the weapon options seem to change all the time, and what's good now is probably not good in six months' time. So even with just those first few colours, you can see him taking shape, and at this point, I'm just going to take Ushati Bone, and Ushati Bone is basically for all the parchment on the model and I'm also going to use Screamer Pink. So while we do all the parchment, all the purity seals are going to be done in Screamer Pink. And now I'm going to use a little bit more of a detail brush and this is an Element Games character brush. I like these Element Games brushes very, very much. I feel like they last for a very long time. They're cheaper than the GW Artificer brushes. And um, if you're in the UK and you're buying stuff from Element, I obviously have an affiliate link that you can use. Uh, it's in most of the video descriptions. So once the parchment is on a few of those pieces, then we're going to go in with uh, Screamer Pink and we're going to touch all the purity seals. I'm actually going to use Screamer Pink for a bunch of the different blood drops on this model as well. And um, you can see me here uh, putting it on the blood drop on the shoulder pad. Sangue guards have a lot of blood drops um, and sometimes I'll do them Screamer Pink, sometimes I'll do Mephiston Red. I think if you vary them in the model you actually can get like quite a good flow or a unique character to the model so that's something to consider. Now we're going to jump on to Dawnstone and Dawnstone is basically the base colour that I like to use for all metallic paint, be it gold, 
be it silver or bronze. So this is quite a heavy step here where I'm going to basically base coat all the armor joints, parts of the bolter, uh, parts of his helmet, the grate on his face plate. Um, I'm going to paint all this in Dawnstone because I think that while I say two thin coats, I think if you put down that first layer of Dawnstone, your metallic paint will go on over it very very well and you won't, you won't need two thin coats of the metallic paint. So you can see here I've done the jump pack, I've done the soles of his base, I've done all the intricacies behind his knees and then I'm actually doing sort of like the the accent of these wings on his other shoulder pad as well and there's bits of the sword as well that will need to be coated in Dawnstone such as the text because this is actually a Death Watch sword. This guy's actually a bit of a Death Watch conversion in that he's got um, a Death Watch sword. Uh, Sangre Guard also have weapon hilts and I like to do the hilts with Mornfang Brown. I think that this gives the effect of like leather or some sort of like dirty, I'd say dirty leather. If you paint the brown and then you come back later with non oil, which we will do, you'll definitely see that. So once we've done the brown, we're going to get straight into the black and um, please feel free to pause the video and <laughs> rewatch bits or try and keep up. As mentioned, I'll mention all the paints that I use at the back. But for the black, there's not too much black on this model. It's mainly just the gun. And then let's talk a little bit about um, basing because at this point, I guess you could technically have him battle ready. You could put him on the table. He wouldn't look terrible. So for now, I'm putting Xandri dust on the base. And Xandri dust is basically the same paint as Armageddon dust, or it's the same pigment, same color. So by putting that first coat of Xandri dust on the base, it's going to make things a little bit easier when I come back to do that. Now we're talking uh, some red, and we're going to be using Mephisto in red, obviously. Uh, Mephisto being an awesome Blood Angels character. And there's lots of red accents on this model. There's um, the parts of the shoulder pads, there's um, the wrist guards, and there's a various blood drops that can also be done in red. This guy specifically has these five blood drops kind of just below his mask or on his like, I guess that would be upper his, his upper chest area. Now I find these actually quite hard to do and you'll see throughout my videos I tend to make some mistakes. Um, but mistakes could always be fixed by going back with the original colour and I think that if you make a mistake at this early stage it's, it's really not a big deal. You can see here that I definitely made mistakes with the brown coats on those little um, ropes that go around his arms. So I go back with the original gold colour and especially around his feet here as well. I should mention that for the feet I actually like to rim the feet um, and I use the black paint for that and I also use the black paint on the back of the jump pack there. So basically, I guess just trying to give that jump pack a little bit more definition. And when you do these sort of like edge rims, you can definitely have the paint spill over a little bit. You can see it here. So then I'll just tidy that up. And with all that done, it's time to get some lead belcher. And there's a lot of metal on this model. And I think for the lead belcher, I think I started thinking I was gonna use my larger brush, but then realized I need to be a bit more accurate here, especially in some of these armor joints. And I like to do all the armor joints for the Sangre Guard in metal. Some of my other guys I would use Mechanicus Standard Grey, like a standard marine. But for Sangre Guard, they're a little bit more ornate, so I tend to use Lead Belcher in all of these little armor joints. We're also going to use it in all the bits of the back of the jump pack here. And we're also going to use it on the soles of the feet. and. I guess there's some bits on the bolter and also some of the helm and some of his sword. So this is quite an extensive step getting the lead belcher on all these different places. But even though this guy's battle ready, they feel like they come together very, very quickly. And uh, I enjoy painting Sangre Guard. I should enjoy them. I've painted so many. I think I must be well over 30 now. Um, and this is hopefully the last batch I ever have to do until we get to Primaris Sangre Guard. So next up, and if you're following along, we're going to talk about um, finally using some Mechanicus Standard Grey and that's going to just be for the little rock that they stand on. Most of the Sangre Guard come standing on these little rocks so I find it's very simple to do Mechanicus Standard Grey on it and when you come back and wash it with Null Oil, sometimes you give it two washes, it gives you a very real rock-like texture. 
Now, if we continue, I'm going to need to get my Screamer Pink and my Blood Red out again because there's a lot of gems. Um, and these gems, some of them, which I gave a second coat earlier, but also sometimes when you're painting, there's lots of little oils on your fingers. If you aren't using a painting handle, and I don't always use one, I used one for this video, but sometimes it can be awkward. If you don't use them, then anytime you're touching these gems, you're potentially taking some of the paint off. And you can see here, as I was painting these little red gems on the bolter, you can see straight away I made a mistake and the red has spilled onto the black. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit, try and dry it out, and then absorb some of the paint out that's touched the black. And you can see here I'm basically getting my brush, wetting it, drying out some of the brush, so there's still some absorbency in the brush to try and pull some of that mistaked paint off. I'm next going to look at Warpstone Glow, and this is what I like to use for eyes. I use that for a lot of the eyes on my Marines, and for the Warpstone Glow I'm going to try and paint the entire eye socket with Warpstone Glow. Now. I'm moving on to some washes and one of the first big steps for washing is going to be these giant Sangre Guard wings and over the Celestial Grey a, a pretty thorough coat of Null Oil on obviously all four sides of the wings is going to be all that I'm after and while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm going to get some Dawnstone and I'm going to try and paint these little uh, Imperial Imperialis uh, text on this sword. Now this can be very tricky, you need to just dab it on slightly and you can see I made a mistake here that's not gonna be a problem we can come back in with the thang and clean that up so while we were doing that obviously the wings are drying and I guess that's an advantage by pulling the, the magnetized weapons off as you can keep working on the same model so for this next step I'm using Praxi white and this white I'm going to be dry brushing all over the Sanguary Guard wings. I've actually made a smaller dry brush than the GW small one by just cutting off the bristles on both sides of a slightly older dry brush. I just think it gives me more control if you're doing delicate small areas. I think a small dry brush is a small dry brush is still generally pretty big when you compare it to the size of some of these models. So when you're dry brushing, you're always trying to get rid of a lot of the paint out of the bristles, and you can see me doing that there now on the edge of my palette and also essentially painting over some of the paints that I've done earlier. And then I'm going to be pretty generous with this and you can see straight away that there's a couple of little sparks of too much paint left in the bristles. If you do get that, try and pull it off either the technique I showed you before or just go over it a bunch of times like this. Um, and I definitely went over these wings a lot, but I think there's definitely a finite point to the wings, but you'll know yourself as you continue to go over them uh, where you need to go and when you want to stop. I'm then going to return to Null and Oil and I'm going to go into all these little armour joints and I'm going to try and paint. I, I tend to think two coats works best for this. So these armour joints, I guess reality, they would be a little bit more gringy, maybe the bolt casings on the bolt rifles. So I find sometimes you just want one coat of Null and Oil uh, on if you're going over the top of Lead Belcher, but maybe in some of these armor joints, if you just want to darken it down, make it a little bit more grim dark, maybe in the back of the power pack, or in this case, the back of the jet pack. Um, but regardless, I'm going to try and hit all the Lead Belcher on the model with Null Noil, and that just brings the paint down one more level of griminess. Uh, hopefully, this camera is recording it pretty well. You can see it. Let's move on to Blood Angel's Contrast Red, and I don't use this paint a lot, I don't generally use contrast paints, this is the one contrast paint I have, but I think there's some pretty neat tricks you can use contrast paint for, and Sangre Guard are one of the models that I like to use them on. There's a little like uh, death mask on this guy's wing, so I'm just going to actually paint the contrast paint right over the gold here, not on his wing, sorry, on his knee, and also uh, there's another little skull in his stomach. Now by painting the contrast paint right over the top of the gold, the gold still comes through and you can see here on this uh, wings of the angel on the shoulder pad, this gives you a really nice cheap sort of like golden sparkly metallic effect with very little effort. So I think contrast paint has its uses and this is definitely one for me. I'm then going to grab my moot green and I'm going into the eye sockets. This time I'm trying not to paint the entire socket, so the entire socket still got that warpstone glow. I'm trying to paint like a little line down the middle of the socket that will just give the eyes a little bit of contrast, maybe make the middle look like it's glowing a little bit more. I'm then going to grab blue horror edge paint and we're going to basically try and just edge paint the sword here and this is just going to give the sword a bit of contrast. I don't do edge highlighting here on these Sangre Guard models, I don't think you need to do that to make them look good. So 
But I think the swords look pretty good with some sort of edge highlight, so we'll put Blue Horror down both sides of the swords. I'm then going to grab Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm going to paint this on the... Everything on the model is gold. Um, and I'm going to be pretty liberal with this as well. This is going to change sort of that Retributor Gold into a much more like bronzy, reddy, crimson effect. And I guess what you're going to try and do when you paint this on is make sure it is not pooling in any areas and just try and thin it, get it into all the joints of the armour and stuff like this. But don't let it pool anywhere on the flat panels. And if it does, you can always mix a little bit of the Reichland flesh shade with a little bit of Retributor armour to sort of fix that. And I'm going to use it here to give like the fingers some definition and you can see it on all the areas around like anywhere anything that's gold. Uh, I'm going to touch it up with this Reichland flesh shade. I did miss one step here where you can see that I went back and actually repainted the Imperial Alice thing on the sword with silver over the top of that Dawnstone that we put on earlier and I did tidy up the mistakes I made uh, when I was painting the Dawnstone. I'm then going to hit the entire sword with Gullum and Glaze and put this on quite thickly. It's going to look maybe not the greatest while you paint it on because it, it, it kind of a thicker paint I guess and you're not really sure what you want it what it's going to look like but once it dries it'll just give the blade like a little bit of contrast it'll let it pop out a little bit more and um i think it i think the final product of the gullman glaze over the top of the fang and sort of an edge highlight can generally be pretty good so we're getting close uh we're going to base this guy obviously and now we're going to return to the armageddon dust that i showed you earlier it's going to be this pretty much the same color as the Zandri dust by putting it on pretty thickly, it's going to let us um, really give the impression that this guy is on some sort of uh, world. And obviously, I think all the GW uh, texture paints are pretty good. Uh, the one that I've got the most experience with this is the Sandry Dust. And I like to put it on nice and thick. And then basically, it's going to be as simple as we're going to wash it and then we're going to dry brush it. And it's going to look uh, reasonably good and it's going to have quite a bit of contrast. So. I like to use a spatula to get this on, but you can also use one of your older brushes. This this stage is going to take a little while to dry because the stuff needs to go on the thicker the better. We're then going to grab that Agrax Earthshade once that's dried and we're going to paint the entire base quite liberally with the Agrax Earthshade. Um, this will essentially create like quite a good contrast in and around and kind of make it look like he's actually standing on some sort of deserty, sandy world. I know a lot of people like to use red bases for their Blood Angels, but I think this sort of like brown base that I have kind of uh, contrasts with them pretty nice. And then I'm going to grab Tyrant Skull. I'm going to grab my little bry brush again because I want to be quite accurate around the feet. And I didn't film that step because I'm an idiot, but there it, he is again with the base dry brushed with Tyrant Skull. And then I just did one more coat of the rim of the base with Abaddon Black to kind of finish him off. And that is, if you would like, a very simple and battle ready Sanguary Guard. So I'm placing a list of every paint that has been used in this battle ready painting style at the top of the screen and also in the video description so you can grab it if you want to copy me if you don't want to copy me that's fine if you even if you take a tiny bit of inspiration from what i've done i'd love to hear about it in the comments section if you're not aware my name is john and i do blood angels content pretty much tactic based content most of the time every week here on youtube we do hang out we do play live games we do do painting streams i'd love it if you consider subscribing and if not no worries i will catch you guys in the next video by the blood are we made strong brothers Peace.